Story one, my relationship started as a prank, and now I don't know what to do. I have five friends, two female and three male, all in their early 20s, and they have been annoying me for some time about being single. I've never had a girlfriend, and I was the one who got made fun of the most for being single. Usually their jokes were lighthearted, but on occasions, they were not. Some of their jokes were really low, but I let them slide because they were friends, although I never forgot them. They were more like insults to me, but I never showed it. About two months ago, they introduced me to a girl, let's call her Emily, and we became friends pretty quickly. Soon we discover that we have a few things in common, so our friendship turned into a relationship. Considering we were early into the relationship, things felt a bit weird for me. We bonded really quickly, and we enjoyed spending time together. Two or three days ago, I went out with two of my friends. We were having fun talking about stuff until one of them asked me why Emily hadn't dumped me yet. I asked him what that was supposed to mean, and he told me that our relationship is a joke slash prank. I asked him to explain, and he told me that all five of them were on board to prank me by having Emily play the role of being my girlfriend for about a week before dumping me. That was the plan originally to which Emily agreed. That didn't go as they planned, and then they thought that she might be might pretend to be my girlfriend a bit longer before eventually dumping me. That also didn't happen, and Emily stopped hanging out with them. She pretty much cut them off from her life after we started dating. We got into a verbal fight that lasted some time, led nowhere, so I called them a-holes and left. To say the least, I was really angry and I called Emily immediately after leaving them to talk to her about this. When we met, she wanted to hug me, which I denied, and I didn't wait for a single second before asking her about this stupid prank. She became pale on the spot and started crying and apologizing for it. She admitted almost immediately that she was indeed on board with that, but she said also said that she dropped the prank entirely and decided to stay because she genuinely likes me. She likes that I treat her with respect, trust, and kindness. I asked when she was planning on telling me this, and she told me that she didn't know when or how to even say it. She said that she doesn't want to play with people's emotions, and that even agreeing to this was so wrong, but in hindsight it turned out good because she met me. That's why she hid it from me. Our conversation didn't last long, and I went home. I blocked all my friends on all accounts, numbers, everything. I don't want to see them again. I don't know what to do with Emily. She keeps sending apologies, asking me not to break up, and that she'll make up for it. I don't know what to do. If she lied and manipulated me into this, what will she lie about or manipulate me into tomorrow? I would find this entire situation comical if it weren't happening to me. Right now, I'm so disappointed in everything, mostly in myself. First off, please don't be disappointed in yourself. Uh, it's not not really your fault that your friends are just kind of monsters to the point that they would be villains in like a 1980s, 1990s movie. Because that's what this plot sounds like it's from. That's wild that they would get someone to do this. And like at first, I was going to say, hey, if your friends are joking like that and it hurts you. Folks, if your friends make jokes that genuinely make you uncomfortable, talk to them. Like, just be open and honest and be like, guys, it actually really kind of sucks when you make fun of me like that, and I I kind of take it to heart, and I don't want you to do that. And if they're your friends, they'll stop. Like, sometimes friends don't realize that their jokes aren't cool, and you just have to be open and honest and blunt with them, because they might not be getting the cues that you're sending. But these friends are beyond that. This joke, there is no conceivable world that I can imagine people concocting this idea who are not just kind of reprehensible. Like, what a garbage thing to do. Now, as far as Emily, I don't know. Talk with her. Talk about how you can rebuild trust if you want to have her in your life and everything, because she definitely made a mistake agreeing to be a part of that, but... I don't know. Maybe it's a mistake that you can forgive. If you're genuinely enjoying your time with her and you connect, then it might be worth trying to rebuild that trust, but it's going to take some work. Story two. Today I effed up, failing to read between the lines. What you're about to read happened during a recent work trip. I was one of four employees from my department that had to spend a couple of nights in a picturesque little town for a business project. We had one woman on the team. She was the project manager. I liked her. 
She was really good at her job, and she was really good to look at, too. I never made it obvious at the office that I was attracted to her because I was taught not to dip my pen in company ink, if you know what I mean. I didn't even know that I had the option to dip my pen in company ink until I finally realized what I failed to realize on the last night of the work trip. I woke up in the middle of the night to the sound of my project manager knocking on my door. I have to point out that she was wearing underwear that was poorly disguised as pajamas. If I was not wide awake before, I was most definitely wide awake when I answered the door and saw what I saw. She apologized for waking me up and asked if I could help her get rid of a spider in her room. I pretended like it was no problem, but deep down I was actually scared of spiders. The spider was nowhere to be seen when I searched the room, which was a relief, but I did come across more than one toy, which obviously did not come with the room. I didn't know how to react to the toys, especially in the presence of my project manager, so I didn't react at all. My project manager said she was going to struggle to go back to sleep knowing that the spider might still be somewhere in her room. I said the spider was probably gone. My project manager didn't look convinced and asked if I was keen to share my room with her, otherwise she was not going to get any sleep. I said my room, which was the smallest of all the rooms, didn't have enough space for two people. <laughs> Hence my suggestion that we rather switch rooms if she really wanted to sleep somewhere else. I was willing to sleep in her room if she was serious about sleeping in my room. My suggestion made her laugh. I didn't understand what was so funny at the time, so I asked her to tell me. She shrugged and said if we were going to do the switch, then she would need a hand with her toys because she was not prepared to leave them behind, especially since it seemed like she was going to end up sleeping in my bed without me. The silence afterwards became so awkward that both of us burst out laughing. It was unclear if we were laughing with each other or at each other, but it was obvious that we were speaking two different languages. She was speaking, I want you inside me, whereas I was speaking, she must be sleepwalking or some crap. As the awkward laughter was beginning to fade and another potentially uncomfortable silence was looming, I dug my grave of obliviousness even deeper by asking her how many toys did she had that required two people to team up to physically carry them all. My project manager made one more attempt to tell me without telling me that she wanted to have it with me. She said she changed her mind about taking her toys to my room because she was more in the mood for the real thing. Instead of reading between the lines, I decided to share a fun fact about toys commonly be sold as novelty items to prevent potential lawsuits in case a customer was unsatisfied with the outcome. At that moment, my project manager apologized for disturbing me and said I could go back to my room because she was willing to sleep with the spider. I returned to my room without realizing what I just walked away from. I only connected the dots when I was back at the office the following day and shared the story with one of my coworkers. What was nothing more to me than a funny spider story at first turned into a sad case of self-sabotage by the time my coworker pointed out all the signs I missed that my project manager wanted to sleep with me. He convinced me that the spider was nowhere to be seen because there never was a spider. My coworker patted me on the shoulder and said all I had to do was have with an unattractive woman who was obviously into me and somehow I managed to F that up. I I've been unable to look my project manager in the eye ever since. You didn't fail to read between the lines, you failed to notice the very obvious lines. There was no in between the lines. This wasn't subtle. I'm sorry, sometimes guys are all talking about like, oh, women, we can't even tell if you're not, you know, obvious and direct, you know, you're just, you're so mysterious with your ways and you play these little games and it's, it's so hard to figure it out and read between the lines. What the hell are you talking about? This couldn't have been more obvious if she had a giant cardboard sign that she was smacking you in the face with that said, hey, wanna bang? Story three. Am I the a-hole for hurting my ex's chance for a job? I, 34 female, am a senior manager at my company and I help oversee recruitment. Normally, I do the first pass interviews and then give my recommendations to my manager for final interviews. At the beginning of the year, the CV for an ex came in as part of recruitment for a new role. He and I broke up over a decade ago, and while it wasn't amicable, it wasn't messy. There was the usual sadness of a breakup, when I saw his CV, I emailed my boss and CC'd HR saying I knew him personally and thought it was a conflict of interest and I shouldn't be involved in the process. We take fairness of hiring very seriously at my company and I really thought it wasn't fair if I was part of the process. I had no follow-ups from my manager or HR beyond saying I was correct and my manager took on the hiring. I wasn't involved at all and had no idea who was through to the next round. 
After about a week, I got a DM from the ex on social media absolutely seething. I didn't know he was applying, but he certainly seemed to know I worked there. He said he hadn't gotten through to the next round and he was accusing me of poisoning the well and fixing it so he wouldn't get into the next stage. I told him honestly that I hadn't been part of that process, but if he wanted feedback, our recruiters would happily give it. I'll admit, our company has a serious social media policy and I was keeping it professional. He went off on me, swearing at me and saying he was going to get me fired for bias. I admit I panicked, blocked him, and got screen grabs of the messages. I sent them straight to, my, to HR and my boss and explained the situation. But come to find out, he had actually gotten to the next round of interviews. It took longer to interview everyone than expected, and come to find out, he was in, but I guess took the radio silence as rejection. But after my screenshots, my boss cut him from the shortlist. I was having drinks with some friends and I told them this crazy story, but thumbs, some thought I effed him over. Half my friends thought I went nuclear based on some social media messages. They actually said I secretly wanted him to not get it, which isn't the case. Half got my point of covering myself with my employer because he was wrong for coming at me. I'm not sure if I overreacted and thought too much about myself. So, am I the a-hole? Oh my god, no, you're not the a-hole, and any of your friends who are saying that you overreacted need to shut the hell up. Oh my god, what idiots. No, that's... No! He threatened your job. He came at you, said that you personally did this, and then said, I'm gonna get you fired. And you know that you did nothing wrong, and you're like, oh, is he gonna try and somehow, like, pin this on me? Well, I'm gonna put this through to my company because I'm not risking my own job for someone that I broke up with a decade ago. Your friends who say you're in the wrong need to get slapped upside the back of their head and shut the hell up. Oh my, what? It, why? Why? Oh my gosh. I would have thrown a drink in their face if they said that to me in that moment. They're, at, they're idiots. You're fine. I'm so mad today. Everything's making me mad. The, la the last story, she wanted to do it. <laughs> Story 4. Customer demands my personal cell number and blames me for him losing his job. I work as a claims adjuster for auto accidents. A customer filed a claim after hours and I follow up with him first thing in the morning. I have no info on the vehicle other than what he reported and I inform him there is a possibility of it being a total loss. He immediately jumps down my throat and tells me he doesn't want his car to be a total loss and he doesn't want me to have it moved to another location for an in-person inspection. I start to discuss an alternative with him where he starts cursing at me and berating me, constantly interrupting me, telling me to just pay the claim. If it were that easy of a job, I'd be paid less, and my job would be a hell of a lot easier. I explain that per his insurance agreement, we have to inspect the vehicle before I can make a payment for his claim, and we need to see if it's going to be a total loss or repairable. He continues to be a butt, so I inform him that I will disconnect the call and try talking to him again when he has regained his composure. I hang up and go into a meeting, and he proceeds to call our customer service line over and over and over. He harassed a total of four women and refused to end the call until I accepted his call. I explained I was in a meeting and wouldn't be out for at least another 30 minutes or so. He continued to stay on the line with them for a few more minutes before hanging up and calling customer service again. I finally have a chance to call him back, and I explain that we can try to work with his shop in having them submit photos so we can do a preliminary check to at least see if the car is a total loss or not. He tells me he sent me photos from the night before. I explain that there were no attachments to the email he sent me, and that we need very specific photos to have the most accurate review. He proceeds to tell me it is my job to call the shop and request them, which is what I told him at the start of the call anyway. He then demands my cell phone number. I explain that I don't have a work cell phone. He states he wants my cell phone to be able to reach me over the weekend. I inform him I will not be providing that info to him. He demanded it a few more times before stating he wanted to talk to my supervisor. I stated she was already informed of the situation and would be reaching out to him when she's able to. I am not allowed to give out her contact info. He tells me that I need to have her call him immediately. I remind him that she is my supervisor and I cannot dictate her schedule. He proceeds to try to keep me on the phone until his demands are met. I inform him that I'm going to disconnect the call if there is nothing further to discuss, and he ends the call. I call the shop and they also gave me attitude stating that I was keeping a good man from his job and that I shouldn't be wasting his time like this. 
I asked if they could email the photos to me just so that I can get it done, and they say they will. I have an uncommon last name, so I made sure to spell it out for them multiple times since it is part of my email address. Two hours before I leave for the day, I still don't have the photos. I text the customer and let him know, and he told me he would call them. Five minutes before I'm supposed to leave, I call the shop again and don't get an answer or option to leave a message. I text the customer to let him know that the photos aren't received yet, and we won't be able to move forward on his claim until Monday. He starts blaming me for working in a different time zone, stating it isn't fair that I work three hours ahead of him. I explain that I don't work three hours ahead of him, I'm just one hour ahead, and the shop had all day to send me the photos needed. He now states that since he doesn't have a rental, didn't purchase the coverage, that he's going to be fired on Monday and it's all my fault. I offer to set him up with a discounted rental and he tells me he doesn't have a rental company in his area, but it's still my fault for him losing his job. Goodness gracious, I'm so sorry to hear that. You mean to tell me that your employer is so heartless as to fire you for missing a workday unexpectedly when it's your first occurrence slash infraction with them? You may want to contact your State Department of Labor then. He tells me I should just pay the claim, and I'm holding up his claim for no reason to make life difficult for him. I wonder what he thinks happens to adjusters who don't follow due diligence on a claim and just pay it. We don't get cookies, that's for sure. In fact, we face termination with our employer, fines with the state that claim was handled in, and possible jail time. Oh yeah, and our employer can sue us for the money we paid to the customer without authorization, and if the customer knowingly cashes the check when they know the claim wasn't supposed to have been paid out, they get reported to the federal government for insurance fraud and sued by the insurance company for repayment of the claim. I guess I'll see what he has to say on Monday. My supervisor has been reading my notes and keeping up to date on the claim, and she's going to have a very fun conversation with him, especially when all the calls exhibiting his bad behavior were recorded. ETA, this is a single vehicle accident where the customer hit a large object in the road that he absolutely should have seen. I won't state the specifics in case he's a Redditor. He did not file a police report, and he wanted to send me photos from the scene of the accident, which took place at night, and became more irate when I stated I needed a VIN photo from the sticker inside his driver's side door. I hope that guy does lose his job. I hope he loses his job and is miserable for a little while. And then I hope the claim doesn't get paid out at all, and he doesn't get any money, and he has to suffer through that. And I hope through all of that, through all of these hardships, that he maybe learns, maybe, maybe learns just a little bit to not be such an absolute prick to people on the phone, especially with a company that has procedures. Look, I don't like insurance companies either. I don't like a lot of the companies that we have to deal with. But you know what I do respect? The fact that I'm dealing with people who have to obey rules. Rules that if they don't obey and just give me money for insurance without actually doing their job, would cost them their job. And that's not something I should demand of anybody unless I am a gargantuan prick. Story 5. Today I effed up by getting caught relieving myself by the Google Street View car. This happened last year, but I think enough time has passed that I can talk about it. Last year, I, 21 female, 20 at the time, was driving a long ways to visit my parents as I hadn't visited them for nearly a year. I was pretty sick at the time and some kind of stomach bug, but I still decided to go. It's a pretty long trip, so I planned to take a stop during the trip for food and a restroom. So there I was, driving down a country road when I started to get the urge to poop. But I ignored it for now and decided to stop when I found a convenient restroom. After driving for even longer, the urge was getting worse, and worse, and worse, until it was extremely bad. I pulled over to check my phone to see how far away the next rest stop was. I don't remember how far it was, but I know it was further than I thought I could make it. So instead of risking it trying to make it there, I instead decided to just drop my pants and poop at the side of the road like the very civilized person I am. So I got out, dropped my pants, popped a squat and started doing my business. Without going into detail, I was there for quite a while, long enough that a car with Google branding drove past while I was there. That was maybe the worst moment of my life. Eventually, I finished up and got back into my car and headed back to my parents. When I got there, I told them about it, to which my mom shared my embarrassment while my dad just laughed at me. I kept checking Google Maps for a while after to see if the images had gone up, but thankfully they hadn't. Until, after a few months, they were there. Images of me having a shameful crap on the side of the road. At least they blurred my face and my butt, though. 
I've purposely left out all the information of where I was and where I was going because surprisingly I don't want people to find where it is, but I guarantee someone will somehow figure it out. So if that's your goal after reading this post, then good luck. And I'm using a throwaway account just in case so I can't be linked to the pictures. I mean, we're going to try and find it. <laughs> we're going to see. No, I don't know. It. No notifications. Um, Google Street View. Pooping. Oh, there's a surprising number of them. I don't even know which one would be this person. I don't even know if all these are Google Street View. Ah, that looks pretty Street Viewish. I don't think that's the right person. That wow, there's a few people who have done this. I guess you don't have to be that embarrassed. There's a <laughs> there's a surprising. There's more than one person. It looks like there's at least at least two, maybe three people who've done this. Eh, eh, that could be four. Interesting. Fun. What a cool club you're a part of. Please leave your story in the comments. I would love to make a video on them in the future. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe.